so that's how it's going to turn out this is my light airy abstract and I did a couple of others just for fun just to see where it would take me and these both can be developed a bit more but I did really like the sort of colours and the mark making uh, it was really just for fun and I'll show you how to do it so it's quite a long process um, but you can fast forward through the bits you don't like and I hope you enjoy thanks for watching and if you like it please remember to like and subscribe all the best thanks very much the other thing is I've done a series of abstracts in previous videos which I'm going to upload on my website so if you go to my website these are going to be very inexpensive thank you from all the mark making that I've done with my tools I've got some really beautiful images really lovely little marks and they're quite fancy just doing a very sort of pretty abstract using these sort of marks so I'm just going to film what I do so what I really like is the way that the colours mix in and sit within the sort of shapes same like with watercolour where the pigment is allowed to flow within the wet marks that you make that's what I like so I've got a piece of stretched paper what I'm going to do is show you a sort of quiet pretty abstract that's about textures and about gentle colours so we'll try we'll see beside me on a table I've got a nice big sheet of glass so that I can roll around my paints I'm just going to use acrylics I've got my favourite tools beside me I'll mix the paint colours I've shown you how to do this in another video I'll link it in the description below and I'll get going just to remind you that all these tools are made in a video that I've made previously so you can refer to that to find out how to make them it's called 10 tools or 13 tools for mark making there's two videos and they're so useful and get really loads of nice mark making ideas I want the colours to be soft and interesting um, and feminine and bright sort of summery like sunshine soft sunshine that's what I like but still an abstract so I'm going for softer colours but greys and light blues and stuff as well but and try and keep the palette fairly limited mainly because I just I don't want it confusing I just want it to be gentle I've got diorolite yellow and nickel azo yellow but these are just paints that I had left over from no, I, was, I actually bought a bulk load of paints. It wasn't really through choice, but they aren't half beautiful. Yeah. So I've limited the palette. The sap green, acrylian blue, a pink, an orange, and I did quite like the red. Um, I can't remember where it was. It's in one of these sketches. I like the way the red had come out. In any case, we'll see how it goes. And I'm gonna really try and use the mark making that we've practiced before. So I will have to make pots up of these as well. But we'll just see how it goes. And I this is just a piece of paper stretched. And I want the paper, the responsiveness of the paper, the absorbency of the paper. But I also want um, a gesso on there for the sake of texture. So there you go. I just chucked on some gesso. And then I'm going to just spread it about the place and leave it to leave dry spaces so that it's not all covered in the gesso and just begin like that and let it make its mark. This is a gorgeous tool there for scraping off plaster but I use them all the time for all sorts of stuff. So you can do it, it leaves sort of fairly uh, straight marks which I don't particularly like, not always. And you'd so I'm going to take those off a bit with some more naturalistic type things so I don't, because this I want, mm, I don't know, that's so nice. I might leave that. That's so nice. It's got both a naturalistic look and a sort of harsh contemporary abstract look, so I'm going to leave it. Mm -hmm. I've got to let that dry now. I'll mix up some colours. I use a tile or something I can clean easy to mix my acrylics on and I'm using a acid yellow with a ochre I love that I love the warmth it creates but it keeps that sort of bright sunshine yellow it makes a very golden color and mix it with white and if you take some of that yellow and mix it with a green you get the sort of uh, tonality you get the
colours that were in the original colours in the next colour. You carry it through so the colours sort of speak to each other, have a bit more meaning to each other. I've got a beautiful pink there so I'm going to keep different sort of types of pink, some with red pigment in, a redder pink and some bright pink. Again, bright pink has that light airy look. Light blue always seems to impart light and sunshine. I've been getting on with other stuff so I'm absolutely filthy now. You'll have to forgive me. Right, so I've got so far. It's dry enough to work on as so long as I'm not too heavy handed and I really love this corner so I'm going to try and keep that lovely blue there but I'm going to start bringing in really nice colours now and lifting through ideas. So I've got a pink mixed so I'm not quite watery. I seem to like colours with colours inside them. So I've got my pink and I'm going to add some red into that and hope that it sort of separates. I don't want to see dark red, but I want the red evident. I want it to sit on the surface. So I've got a red in there and my pink. And I'm just going to make sure I've got enough liquid in that. I'm going to take this a bit off. I don't mind if it's a bit dirty. dirty. And I love the mark making of these. So I'm just going to start. And I'm going to hope that it separates out. Yeah, like sort of so that it does pick up some of the red pigment and allows the pigment to to spread throughout the pool of liquid as the pigment would do with watercolor and i know that as this dries the pigments will move across the water tension the surface water tension and create really lovely make marks that you couldn't make yourself this next bit is putting acrylic on as a paste and i'm using a flat piece of card to push the paste into the grooves that were made in the gesso, the original coat of gesso. So you're using the layer of blue plus this layer of yellow. And a wonderful trick is that spray water which softens, dilutes the edge of it and blends the paint into whatever you're wanting to blend it in, takes off the edges and softens it. So you're using a series of tools, your scraper, the water to soften the colours and blend the colours and the grooves and the textures that were created by the original gesso. All the while you've got to think about the composition and start thinking about what it is that you're trying to achieve and in my case I really really like the way that paint can evoke memories so this is supposed to evoke the memory of a sunny summer's day with all the colours in permanent movement, subtle and evocative. And all the things that move, nothing stays the same. Everything's always transient. The last bit is just to add some more of the red acrylic and to throw it onto the splattered water pools that already exist, knowing that the red pigment is gonna move across and sit on the edges. When it's dry, it creates these gorgeous patterns. Okay. So that's what that's like when it's dry. Dried it with a hairdryer. So some of them's got a bit spidery. And then what do you do next? So it's obviously gone a bit too pink, but I do like the spideriness of it. I mean, I could make a tool especially for it, but I don't have time. I think perhaps if I was doing it, if I was doing it for myself, I would invest in making a very specific tool, but I'm going to just put some gesso on it. I've just poured some out, only because I need this to be fairly quick for, for everybody. Right, I'm just going to pick up bits of it and sort of... I want it to go around there. Oops, and these are good tools. Uh, these silicone heads are nice, you know, because you get the chance to actually paint with them, they, but they more that they move stuff around the place. And that's right, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to actually use that as well. Dip it into the gesso and put it on top of this. See if I can get these spider effects back. Let's try this one. Because what I'm gonna do is put a glaze on top of this. So you're just working in and over it 
until you've developed something that's interesting. Like I did really like some of the pink stuff, but not so much, or not as much of it. And I love it when it's like really unusual. So you've got that funny straight line there. Like that up a bit. shame that you have to wait for it all to dry. Okay, let's see what happens with all that. Let's have a look at it. Um, just do some very erratic mark making in it sort of a reflection of what's already there, I suppose. With these lovely uh, silicone heads. Um, and I'll add some of that into there. And so I'm just making yellow marks. some green ones too. So I'm just using the, the white and the yellow there. I'm going to mark make through that again. I'm just going to see what would happen if I add a bit of light blue again. So just gonna splatter it with light blue. Oh yeah, it lifts it again, doesn't it? Light blue has that funny thing of making things look light and airy, don't that, doesn't it? That's unpleasant, so I'll get rid of that. I've got some lovely marks through there. Look at that if I can actually rub it into the yellow. Completely changes it when you rub it. It's... I don't like these dark reds that I've managed to make, so I'm just taking them out. And it's begin and it's taking out these darker splodges of bluey thing. And it's beginning to have something. Take out some of the obvious splatterings just by softening them, adding some water. Again, it just put so much water on it, it takes forever to dry, which is a shame. And I put, I want something here, and I'm putting a, just a wash on, basically, a light blue wash. And again, I shall just take it away, so it's almost just a really quiet gray. Right, that's the next stage, and I'll have to see what happens with this. I think what I'm gonna do next is put in some I've got an or that orange, that gorgeous orange. I'll mix it with a bit of water and a bit of uh, glazing solution, some uh, gloss medium or matte medium, it doesn't matter, and I'll let it sit into that so you'll have another layer of something going on, which would be interesting. I think I can also bring some more yellows through, and I might just take areas of this out afterwards, depending on what it looks like. I just want to add some sort of rich depth to it, but I'll take the, I'll make it so there's hardly any there when it's finished. Back to it again, so I've dried it, not particularly well. Um, and it's so difficult to know what to do. I mean, that's nice, that half, and maybe that's nice, that half. Do I try and make it so that it's all nice or do I just resign myself to what I've got you know um, I really fancy some of that darker blue in there but again as a glaze um, I like it um, Sort of coming back, yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Sitting into the grooves, that's what I wanted. And it's sort of bringing the foreground back from the, from the background together. I need a bit more of that turquoisey blue. No, it's cerulean blue. 
but I want the dark so you can't tell which is the foreground and which is the background as it sort of jumps in and out of each other. Okay, right, spray it so that it's soft again. So it sits in it there, that's nice. Yes, I don't like this the way it's sitting, it's sitting in a groove, but I'm gonna dry it. So I've got some nice interest there um, and I've got some, I love this bit and I think that that bit could be continued over here somehow and how do you do that without completely obliterating this, what I've done here? Maybe it needs to go. What I wanted was a bit of orange in it so I'm also going to try and bring that in. Oh gosh look, that amazing colour too orange but I can leave it on and then see how it works after. Again it's using all these lovely tools that we've got to try and push the issue. I wanted that to actually sort of sink into the holes like we did before but oh no it's far too harsh. It's just covering everything. Whoops that's a shame. Well that's interesting. That's just covered absolutely everything. I wonder if there's a way of moving it. Make it sit in the holes. Oh, that's better. That's what I want to do with this. Let's take that off. It's not quite so harsh, but you see, sometimes these things dry so differently. It's here. I think what I want is to use what's there, but make more of a definite mark. I'm going to use the gesso again. Just pop it in the middle and then I'm going to smear it to the edges. For some reason I always seem to end up doing a sort of square somewhere. I mean no doubt it won't end up looking like a square. I like that bit. So I'm going to try and replicate it over here. Right now I'll have to let that dry. I mean I might have to do that overnight. And the other thing to do is to turn it round all the time. Keep looking at it from other an an angles of it. Here you see this is nice because it's beneath what's already there, whereas that's on the surface. I think it needs some yellow in there. So I'm going to get some yellow. Yeah, that lemon yellow is really nice actually, is it? And I'm going to bring that through here, there and just see what happens. Same with it there, and more of it down here. And again, I'm surprised that lemon yellow worked. See, what I want is more of it there, but not those marks. I'm gonna just splatter it a bit. But it's a bit stranger. I sort of got bored of it. Now I've lost that lovely bit in the middle. Let's see if I can just take, because I really like this bit, don't I? So let it be, let it show. But I could always add more blue on top of that. And this looks really clumsy and horrible at the moment, but it will change. And now this is unbalanced. I'm gonna go for some disgusting pink and see whether that works. Only because I've gone too red, I think. And again, you see, this isn't the end. I, I can just keep pulling it through. Sort of don't obliterate so, too much of what you did before, but at the same time, don't get hung up on it. 
I'm just going to take some of that out to sort of bring it between each other. And I've got some mixing white here. It's just left over. I'm just going to pull it through just to mark make. And I've lost stuff there. Oops, and that's just me messy. Oh, it's quite nice. No, that's a mistake, but that was nice. Oh, that's nice. That was purely accidental. But that's the sort of colours I wanted. More than the red, I got carried away with the red. So let's see if I can just take that there. I do like that orange, but not too much of it. So take that out as well a bit. Just so that it's talking about it, but not necessarily there too much. that needs drying again okay that's fairly dry and there's things that I really like about it I mean I love this dark blue in it but I don't think it creates a very balanced picture so and I do think it really needs light blue in there so I'm going to try and get that back again you know with using very very light blue and see if it'll if I can mark it like I did before with a hairdryer you know make it go into the holes so the hairdryer and the water dissolve the pigments and make them sit into the grooves of the gesso that was applied before. And when you rub it, you're both rubbing it onto the surfaces but also into the grooves as well. And you diffuse the edges. Some tissue paper on that. I've just got too much water on there. Yeah, I've lost that in there again. So I think what I need to do is add a bit of white mark make again through it you know uh, this is too clumsy uh, sharp brush end of a brush right let's see what happens with that oh i'd quite like that actually taking that down right this is dry down here it's amazing how much it changes isn't it? On. right i think a dark green in here no, not a dark green, a grey green. So here goes. And I just want to rub it in like so. And again, let it go into the holes. So it's using the hairdryer to let it to ease it into those holes. It doesn't matter that the hairdryer pushes the pigment around. It's almost nice. I mean, again, you go with it. Too much water is going to be a bit of a problem, but you just have to work with it and see how it best suits your methods and your approaches. It's really nice when you add the pigment and push it into the grooves with a hairdryer and then diffuse off the edges, soften the edges with tissue paper. Everything's still damp and moving. And you'll learn how to control this in a way that you're, that interests you as you go along. I then continue to work on the rest of the composition, adding the colour whites and yellow pigments and patterns and mark making, diffusing yellow through it so that things remain soft, moving and ethereal, light, airy. Just enjoy it really. I'm using the, a very, very light yellow there, I think. Yeah, um, uh, which takes down the sort of intensity of some of the pigments, but also adds this sort of luminosity because yellow always seems to add light. I'm taking out some of the darker spots there. And here I'm uh, just adding interest. The whole thing was a little bit too plain. So I'm taking in some gesso so that I can mark make. I'll drag through it with a pen or the blunt edge of a paintbrush to create more depths again and more interesting patterns, more interesting mark makes just to keep all that movement and it's not just movement across the page, it's movement between the depths of, and the perspective of the painting. I know it takes a long time to develop all this and it takes a lot of work but it really is worth it. There's a complexity that's achieved that is of interest in and of itself. 
Oh, here I start adding some light blue, because again, light blue seems to really add light. Um, one of our rooms in our house is painted bright light blue, and it's a very joyous room. And here's some more mark making, some more textures, which I know when they're dry, I can add pigment to. So continually adding interest, going back with different types of mark making to keep the thing sort of coordinated as well. Oh, and then I was decided, oh yeah, let's get for a really bright pink to sort of lift everything through. And again, it challenges the perspective. It challenges where the mark making is because the different colors themselves add um, a, a dance, a patterning and a sort of translucency and questions quite what you see all the time. You use tones and pigments to create interest as well. So if you've got dark bits towards the bottom or the, or the edges, it looks like it's looking through deeper water. And also, the, if there's a sort of patterning or a trail or something that takes your eye across the painting, for instance the depths and the corners of these pieces that appear to be to recess, then again you're leading the eye around the painting in the way that you want it to be led. It all seems quite contrived but it really adds to the possibilities of the composition. Okay, you've got some really nice bits in here. Um, I came back to it this morning and I really enjoyed its delicacy. Um, I just want to develop a few more colours in it. I love the depth that I've created in, in parts of this. Sort of simply by adding colours and taking them away, scratching through the ones remaining in the background. So again, takes time, but probably it's worth it in the end. So I'm just going to add a few more colours just to lift it out of itself a bit. So I've got a warm yellow here and there's these lovely colours that are coming through on these bits so I want to lift them out too. I also want to, to continue to get the colours to sit in it in areas. You see that's quite a bright yellow but I would take it down again in the future so the whole thing stays quiet. Hi! So I've, I've used the white gesso again and I'm just letting the ink sit into the grooves. You see that's just a mark until you let it melt into the grooves and then it becomes something different. If the paper is properly stretched in the first place you don't get it sitting in the dips of the runkles, the ruckles that it's formed. You, can, you have a bit more control at the moment I think what I'm doing is I'm getting colour just sitting on the tops but I do really like all this it's amazing how this is sort of really nearly finished I'm just touching up the little bits sort of making it work just a bit more I suppose and I love the depths that are created in here so I really want some more down here I think just take it through yellow in this bit but not too much right and again get this blue in there I mean it's just so pretty yeah that's nice and balances this area off as well so it's amazing work you take out that white and the whole thing changes a bit so I'm just making it translucent blue there and then I might add a bit more depth to the blues as I go on yeah I really think that's about it really I guess a bit of green but I just want some, just to pull those beautiful, right, that's a really horrible green, so I'm not going to take that off. It needs some black in it, and I'm going to do it in layers. So I'm going to put black with it, and then put a, a dark blue layer on top of it. Right, so I've got a lovely black green there. And again, you see, your brush makes a big difference how this apply, is applied. But that's nice. And I like that, but I'm going to put a pink through there. See if I can get a pink to sit in those grooves. I hope you can see this. So I'm going to apply... Oh yeah, that's nice. 
that sort of it's translucent enough to and that's too harsh just take it off again there where it sits in the grooves it's so cute and then you're sort of layering it onto the other bits so not too much water because then it just becomes a puddle so just rub some on too much. It's not right for here. And then it means I'm going to tip back again. I just want it to be like, you know, um, soft, really, really soft and gentle, but vivid. Gosh, a difficult balance. And then of course, you know, they change so much as the colours settle down and dry. these little dots and the sort of intricacy of it so I've mixed up some paint and it's trying to keep a warm yellow so I have also used some binder as well because I want to use it with the tools Do you paint or are you just oh, interested in I've art? I started going to watercolour classes and did about three years and then then we got grandchildren. They've ruined everything. They've ruined everything. <laughs> so do you look after them quite a lot then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you can guarantee it was always when I was supposed to be on in a class. So I've put the more yellow and orange sort of erratically around here just to bring in these funny lovely little marks that the red and the pink have made that are so sharp in it and I, I really like what's happening down here I'm not sh it's very difficult to see when you've when it's laid down like this I, mean, I think that's probably done I think when this is glazed some of the sort of depths will come out more. Just push it up. Maybe that was enough there. Turn that down. I'm just using a dark blue glaze over these just to take some of that white out. And that, honestly, I think that's it now. Yeah, I think I'm quite happy with that now. So it's stopped fiddling basically. I'm not sure I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. <laughs> right, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to have a go at glazing it and see what happens because the colours in the background come forward and I spent a lot of time on this when it was only supposed to be a demo 
very easy done though. Do you know what I mean? Because when it's, I've not done them before, this type of thing, and when it's, when you're not used to doing it, you sort of have to get used to it first. Oh, that's nice over there. It takes off that intense yellow as well. Yes, I do like that. I'll just take the dark blue down through there, I think. I always do this when I'm finished, finished, I haven't. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to stop now.